Right. Okay, so we're recording now. Um, the purpose of the recall system is to allow the dentist to be more confident that patients will be contacted and will not be lost. Okay. I think that there is an urgency amongst dentists to do as much work as they can on patients because they think the patient's going to get lost. So if you have a recall system where the patients are going to be called up, there's less chance of the patient being lost and there's more chance of them coming back. Does that sound a good thing, Elder? Yes. Okay. So a good recall system gives the dentist confidence. So they're not quite so much in a hurry. The purpose of recall appointments is to help the patients prevent dental problems to check on their sugar reduction. Uh, if you've talked to a patient about sugar reduction and then you ask them how they're getting on when they come back for a checkup, it makes them feel that you're really interested in them reducing their sugar intake. Um, it's to detect early tooth decay and to check on the patient's uh, gum condition. Um, so when I saw patients for recall and I checked their gums, it made them feel that that, that was important and helped them build confidence when they saw their gums were better. It also enables stage treatment planning. I would explain that. Staged treatment planning, the purpose of it is to allow the treatment to extend over a longer period of time rather than completing treatment all at once in a short period of time. The advantages are that it allows payments for treatment just one second. Can I tell you something? Sorry, I missed. I'm waiting to join on Zoom. Um, have you tried? Yes, but uh, the connectivity is an issue, I think. It keeps on saying connecting. Okay. Uh, do your best. I'll let you in as soon as I can. And I'll send you the video okay. anyway, okay? Okay, I am waiting. Okie doke. Okay, bye. Bye. Um, so with a recall system, it allows payments for treatment to extend over a longer period of time, making the treatment more affordable to more patients. So if you say, well, we can do this little bit of treatment now, and if you come back in six months time, we can do a little bit more for you. It avoids patients feeling pressurized into having a lot of treatment at one go. And it reduces the patients feeling worried about the cost of treatment. Just one second. Okay. Um, it avoids people, patients becoming tired by having a lot of treatment. 
in a short period of time. Because you could do some treatment with the patient and say, have a rest now and we'll do some more in six months time or three months time. It allows patients initially to arrive at a stable situation and then progress with further treatment in convenient stages. I had one patient who I took 18 years to finish her treatment. Why? Sorry? Why? Um, because we did the initial things that needed to be done to get the gums healthy and decay removed and root canal treatments done and core buildups. And then she'd have one or two crowns a year or every other year. Okay. So it took 18 years. She was not concerned about the cost, particularly. She had money, okay. but in her way of doing things, doing a little bit at a time suited her. Okay. Have you ever extended a patient's treatment over a period of time, Eldo? Yes. Yeah. And it makes it easier for the patient. Yeah. The purpose of the first stage is to deal with active disease, such as tooth decay and gum disease, to start the correction of occlusal problems and to allow the patient then to have a break from treatment. I used to call it my treatment, my treatment plan. Okay, and I didn't, I didn't uh, give patients estimates for all their treatment. We just dealt with the initial things, then they had a rest. And then if I was going to do some crowns or implants, I would then give an estimate for that little bit of treatment. We do that treatment and then they'd go away again and come back on the checkup appointment, recall appointment. And I would then recommend something else. Um, Sir, someone is waiting for letting in. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Sally's coming in. So on the first stage, I would do a complete examination, uh, start them on uh, cleaning their teeth well. I remove tooth decay and I do fillings and root canal treatments. I might do some occlusal adjusting and then at later dates, I would do a recall appointment, followed by some further treatment, such as partial dentures, crowns, bridges, or implants. And then I would do a, I'd follow that by a recall appointment later on. And then I do further treatment. But if you don't have a recall system, then this doesn't work, okay? So later we'll go through how to develop a recall system. Have you developed your recall system, uh, Siley? Yes. We is are trying. To... Is it working okay? Yeah. Most of the times, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so the recall procedure, uh, we would check their medical history to see if there's any changes. Um, 
Do you ever do that, Eldo? Yeah, medical history, though I know, I've never asked them again. Uh, in the UK, under the National Health Service, uh, you'd have problems if you didn't uh, record that you checked their, uh, their medical history. Okay. Um, I mean, say for example, they'd, uh, they'd uh, had a heart attack three months ago, or they'd become diabetic. Yeah or they'd had a, an anaphylactic shock from penicillin allergy. I think you should check their medical history every three or four monthly. I once, many years ago, because I'd done some uh, extra uh, uh, oral surgery in hospitals, uh, one of the people in the clinic was struggling to take out a wisdom tooth. Okay. And after quite a long time, they called me in and the patient didn't look very well at all. And I finished taking the tooth out and uh, we sent him off to hospital. Okay. And he had very low uh, hemoglobin. Globulin, hemoglobin, okay. Okay. The doctor who was uh, in charge of him had taken a medical history three or four weeks earlier and the patient had given a blood transfusion a few days before the procedure. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> what a stroke of bad luck. Right. Um, so anyway, you need to check up uh, and also um, I would also be asking them, how are you getting on with your cleaning? How's your bleeding now? Okay. Uh, I want my patients to be able to say to me, oh, I've got a bit of bleeding down here. Can you help me with that? What can I do about it? Okay. It may be a case of them using a different instrument or going in and out 20 times as opposed to 10 times. Or maybe I might have to put some local anesthetic in and do some curetting. Okay. I will give you a special prize, Elder, when you do your first scale and curatage. When you do your first? Scale and curatage. Okay. So have done. Satish, it has taken me uh, 10 years now, and I still it's haven't succeeded practice. in getting Elder to do a scale and curatage. Um, so uh, on a recall appointment, you take the appropriate x-rays, which we'll look at. You need to check their soft tissue for cancer and other um, ulcers and things. You need to check their jaw joint, their occlusion, check their teeth, uh, check the vitality of previous deep fillings, uh, and then do a gum check. This would be the routine that I would use for a recall appointment. Uh, and I would probably uh, check on the way they're cleaning, they're brushing or toothpicking or something or other. Possibly I might do some scaling and polishing if the patient's cleaning is not adequate. Now, I believe that a patient who's got calculus, it's because they aren't brushing correctly. Uh, and the idea of people needing to have dentists or hygienists cleaning their teeth every six months, I think that's appalling. That should never happen. Okay. Um, do you think, Siley, that your patients are getting less calculus? 
Yeah. Yes. Uh, good. Okay. Um, I used to consider that even the small amount, the smallest amount of calculus, uh, it was due to not brushing properly. Now that's being quite, you know, a perfectionist. But if you have that attitude, I think that it makes you um, look up, teach the patients better. Um, now, x-rays that are needed six monthly, bite wings of all the posterior teeth for patients who've had active tooth decay recently and patients who you've seen has got enamel caries on previous x-rays. Uh, Periopical x-rays for patients who've had root canal treatments with periopical areas to see how they're getting on. X-rays needed for all patients once a year. All patients, if they're coming in on a yearly basis, should have bite wings of all the posterior teeth and periapicals of large fillings, root canal treatments and crown teeth. So you can check things early and all implants. Okay. How successful are you, Eldo, in getting patients who've had implants to come back for checkups? Very rarely they come back, even after multiple calls you make, maybe three or four hardly. So. Now, are they telephoned after six months? Yes, yes, they are, they are telephoned already. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I had the same problem with some patients. Okay. You had the same um, problem with? With some patients, a few. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I think the English patient is much more likely to come back for recall appointments. Yes. But it does help you um, have high success rates, Eldo. Yes, I understand. I presently, I always feel, you know, we should call them back and then unscrew it. And then, especially if it's a fixed restriction. I've seen people coming after maybe a month later with all calculus underneath. All these uh, fixed restrictions that they show, uh, you know, on Facebook and WhatsApp, everything, it doesn't have any space underneath the gums, uh, un you know, below the fixed restriction and the mucosa for them to pass a flaws or uh, injured in the brush and all that. Most of the cases. So I don't know uh, how well these people can maintain it. Oh, I think some uh, some bridge work on implants is appalling in terms of being able to clean. They must be able to toothpick between the teeth, between the implants uh, and or interdental brush. They must be able to do that. Um, You see, I cemented all my bridge work, so uh, um, there was no uh, question about taking the bridge work off and looking at it. Okay. I, I've seen, uh, I know some dentists in, in UK who regularly, every year they recall the patient, they unscrew the implant and they, uh, you mean, uh, I mean the superstructure, and yeah. then they put new screws in and send the patient every year. Yeah. I think that's it. You don't need to remove the, all the screws and re, you know buy new screws, but whatever it is, I always feel that you should remove it and clean it and check what is there, and then you can read. I don't think, you know, I mean, uh, I don't think it should be necessary. Um, I think the skill of the dentist in motivating the patients 
uh, is proportional to the amount of cleaning that needed to be done on a recall appointment. I really, really had to lick off a bit of calculus. But I mean, how many of these clinics uh, give away toothbrushes, interdental brushes, and toothpicks? It would be interesting to know. Um, so the reason for the x-rays is to detect early tooth decay, uh, to detect uh, peripheral areas, to detect bone loss around teeth, and particularly bone loss around, loss around uh, implants. We've lost Eldo for a few minutes. Um, I'll go back when he comes in. Frequency of uh, recall appointments. Some patients need to come back three monthly, some six monthly, and some yearly. Um, to try and organize a recall system, which is every year and a half, I think is a little bit difficult. Uh, on the patients that you get to come back, um, Siley, uh, do, do you have this sort of interval system? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, you got that uh, presentation, Aldo, that I sent to you. Have you seen it yet? You asking me? It's a patient that I treated for about 20 years. No. I sent it, I sent it to you yesterday. No, I have not gone through. Okay. That I'll is that, uh, that beans? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You'll find that fascinating. Okay. Okay. Um, it's at about 20, 20, 25 years worth of treatment. Um, Three monthly recall appointments, patients who have recently had active tooth decay, patients who have recently had active gum disease. Six monthly, so people who've had uh, active tooth decay fairly recently in the last year or two, uh, or have had gum problems uh, in the last year or two yearly ones for all patients so that the beginning of a problem can be detected early enough. Now, the, the curiosity, a, a curiosity of mine is that dentists who treat their family don't have their family in a, on a regular recall basis when they shouldn't have any problems in getting the patients in, because they're family. Um, it's a loose system. How do you get on with that, uh, Siley? I um, usually, they visit once in a year. My husband is really bad. He doesn't, but rest of the family members usually visit. Yeah. Um, you ask your husband to come in, do you? Yes, he keeps telling me about his dental problems when I'm at home, yeah. and he keeps postponing the dental visit. Mm. So now I'm just left. I've started neglecting uh, to attending his problems. I can't do much at home. Mm. I thought you were quite bossy, Siley. So I thought you. I'm surprised at you. Oh, his busy busy schedule. He makes me work work overtime. He has to come in during my appointment time. That's the difficult part. That phase I am bossy. Okay. Shall I tell you a story? A real okay. story? Yeah. When I was working in a college in, in Calicut, the 
owner of the college is a i think i've told you this owner of the college is a radiologist and um, his wife is a dentist uh, so they both owned the college and i was the first staff and that time we had only probably uh, you know the college has just started its first year so she had uh, she already has uh, had some dental treatments done and uh, she developed dental pain and then she went to the principal and the principal is an endodontist the principal said you know there yeah, there's an endo problem there so we have to redo the root canal and all that and then uh, they did the uh, re, uh, they redid the root canal pain was not going so uh, she said i don't why don't i go to the oral surgery department the oral surgery fellow said that she's got impacted tooth that is why it's really problem they removed impacted tooth till the pain was not subsiding so she went to all these departments and finally she got fed up and she came to me and said i am in terrible pain i cannot go to another college or i cannot go to another dental clinic in in this place because everybody knows her she owns a dental college and how she, how can she go to another dental clinic so i said don't worry you take a train you come to cochin which is far off so nobody will be knowing you know uh, you are going to another dental clinic and then we'll finish off your treatment and send you back so then one day she came back here and then you know there were few uh, crowns which is which had a uh, you know leaky margin so i removed the crowns and then one or two root canals had been redone we did all that and then put a new crown and send her back so you know she is like like uh, you know harry prince harry owns everything but you know undergoing terrible pain yes yeah i i met her didn't i eldo you wouldn't have met her no wouldn't oh no this is calicut uh, so far away you have not gone calicut my husband is the most difficult patient he doesn't let me anesthetize he had a class to filling he doesn't let me use a band he says i don't want to use a floss he wants the contact sealed with the neighboring tooth okay 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 well yeah. his the height of the tooth is really small i can't apply a band without hurting the gums he jumps out in pain it's a terror to have him in the clinic i think you should refer him refer him to aldo <laughs> yes i think so that too with nitrous oxide sedation i think yeah <laughs> um so the things you need for the recall appointment these are familiar things that you're used to um have you got any of these yet uh, sally no i've been searching it online but i haven't been able to procure them yet mm. um do you know the source where to get them eldo Yeah, this is supplied by Ufridi. I can send you the uh, contact number of one guy called Williams. He says his company has got something similar to this. Okay, because I, I've been searching on uh, dental cartons, where everywhere. I, I'll send. Just yeah, send me a WhatsApp. I, I'll try to get his number. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sally, make a note that Ella is going to do that. Okay. Yeah. Keep. 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 Uh, you know, sending missiles. Um Saidi uh try this number Okay Have You yes. photographed you got the number you photographed it Yes Okay try that number uh once you find out uh let me yeah. know Okay Okay um once you get these instruments you throw away all your periodontal probes and your other probes because you've got both of them in one instrument here so much easier um so for charting um recording information when you're doing a recall appointment you need blue pens red pens and a pencil 
and the patients folder. So you need to um, look at their previous uh, medical history and just check with them uh, if there's been any changes and record that. Minima x-rays uh, once a year, two bite wings and peripacals of all root canal treated teeth and all heavily filled teeth and all implants. Uh, how are you getting on with the uh, um, x-ray uh, system, uh, uh, Siley? Good. Yeah. Um, uh, Harika, you've seen uh, Tejas's uh, x ray positioning uh, instruments, haven't you? Yeah, I have seen. Have you used them yet? Yeah, I used them. Good, okay. Have you used them, um, Satish? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, Although it may be more convenient, uh, this system that Tejas has got, than the one you've got. Okay, I would ask, Sadish, can you send a picture of, you know, what system he has? You mean the X-ray unit, sir? Holder, yeah. Okay, sir. I'll send you. Um, Which company is it? And I, what, what's the company called, uh, uh, Sali? Uh, troll bite. Tr tr true bite. T R O double L. Double L. Troll bite. Yes, sir. Um, if you, um, Eldo, if you yeah. uh, Google it, troll yeah. bite, uh, you can watch the videos. T R O double L. B Y T E. Yeah, T R O double L. B Y T E. B Y T E. Uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, because I think that if you had it, it would encourage you to use, uh, to take more x-rays. Okay. Okay. I mean, this type of system is so much better than trying to do it by eye and having the patient hold the x-rays. You uh, remember those old days, don't you, uh, Siley? Yes. <laughs> in my presentation on x-rays I've got your original x-rays you sent me that were done with the patient holding the x-ray um, Satish if you go to my website and you go to um, uh, 08 clinical dentistry and you go to new patient examination, uh, it's got uh, a presentation on x-ray taking. Um, you may find that interesting, okay. Can you know the website, sir? I did not get you there. Uh, if you go to uh, 08 clinical, uh, clinical dentistry, 08 clinical dentistry, in my website, mm, yes. and you go to O2 new patient uh, examination and recall, mm, look and look at the x ray section. Yes. Okay. And the clinical examination routinely for new patients and for recall patients. I always check the soft tissues, moving the tongue around so you can see what's going on. Okay, you see looking for ulcers and any uh, soft tissue lesions. I then check the jaw joint 
by putting fingers over the patient's uh, joint, having them open, close, open, close, go to the left, right, left, right. Uh, and this is just routine. Historically, Eldo, um, I started using an examination system uh, that was very thorough. And it was before I knew about occlusion. Okay. So it asked all these questions. And I thought to myself, um, if, I, if I do the examinations properly, uh, it's going to encourage me to go off somewhere and find out how to do practical occlusion. Um, so I learned to examine patients before I learned how to be able to do anything occlusively. Um, you can get patients to tap their teeth together and then you listen and see if you hear a very clear note like this. Okay, one note. Um, you then do the Dawson hold on the patient, which is the same as bimanual manipulation. Fingers along the lower border, thumbs on the chin. Sally, are you getting better at doing this? Yes. Um, It's my experience of doing this on many, many Indian dentists. It's, a, it's extremely difficult getting Indian patients to allow you to, to do this on them and to take over and open and close their jaw in the hinge position. All this clinical part so far has taken about three or four minutes. It's very quick. Um, so here I'm manipulating this patient into the hinge position. And I'm asking him where he's touching. So he's told me three times that he's got an interference on the left. So I can assume that's correct. If it's three times, same interference, then I know that's correct. So the patient might be hitting like this in the in position. And then we check for a presence of a, the presence of a slide from the hinge position into maximum tooth contact. <coughs> so we check, we, I, we close, I close them together onto their first contact and then get them to bite and ask them what happens. So I'm closing them together Ask him to bite. So he tells me that he has a slide forward. Now, the interesting thing is that this patient used to be my dental technician and he used to teach with me. And I had equilibrated him maybe a year or two before. So the reason for checking this on a recall appointment is that occlusions are not stable. <clears throat> they need to be adjusted occasionally. Okay. Then we check for non-functional contacts where we have the patient go out to the left side and we check to see if there's any contact on the opposite side. So when they go to the left there, I'm asking the patient if they're touching on the right side.
So you notice that when I say go to the right, I touch them on the, their cheek on the left and say, are you contacting here? That helps them orientate where I want them to, uh, to, to, to check. Then I do the tooth charting. I very rarely poke an, a, an explorer into teeth. Maybe occasionally on occlusal surfaces. And then I uh, check the gums and check their cleaning. <clears throat> so that would be a recall appointment. And then I might recommend some more treatment for them, another crown or root canal treatments, uh, sorry, or uh, implants at that stage. Now, uh, for Eldo and uh, Sile, um, going through this may remind you of some things which you may not be doing at the moment, um, or it may confirm that your system is going well. Okay. Um, do you uh, do your recall system, Eldo, on a computer or on a clip binder? On a clip binder. Okay. Sally, what do you do? Do it on both. That's even better. <laughs> well done, Sally. Um, what did she you, say? She said she uses both. <laughs> you, can't, you can't argue with that one. <laughs> um, the binder system, you need two clip binders. Do you have two, Eldo? No, only one. Okay. Um, so you have one for the current year. Only for the current year. Yes, okay. So you write on the patient's notes, recall, um one year so it needs to go into the appointment book uh, the recall book which is for the next year uh, so they can't do that if it, unless you've got that second book okay okay um, so that patient gets lost. Um, so you need one like this and you make labels up uh, 72 font for the uh, front, okay. This probably is 72 font, okay. Um, and you put that onto the folder like this. You got a label printer yet, Eldo? Not yet. I use mine frequently. Um, Think about getting one, okay? And uh, you'd be pleased to get one. Uh, and then for the back of the, uh, um, the folder, I like this, uh, 36 font. Sally, do you have two uh, clip binders? No, only one. Actually, I had printed 
two sets last year 2020 when we started the study club yeah but i haven't made one for 2022 <laughs> see um have you put down a po written a post it about it <clears throat> yes uh you can use your um your 1921 your, your 2021 uh, they have some names written on them. Yeah, okay. you just need, Whereas, okay, use the okay. same clip binder, but uh, just print yeah, off yeah. some more sheets. Okay, okay yes. Um, and then for the next year, you do the same thing. Yes. Okay. Um, then you add the monthly dividers. Were you able to get any monthly dividers, uh, Sally? Yes. You were? Fantastic. Were you, Eldo? Yes. No. Where do you get them from, Sally? We, we get it, monthly but I, I have not got it. it. No, 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 not this one. I don't have this. Okay. You don't have January, February? Month. No, no, not these. So what we do you do? Have, we have a post-it coming, extending out of the... Okay. Not these. I thought you were asking me about the uh, printout, month-wise month printout. Um, you see, if you buy two sets of these, they're going to last you all your practicing life. Hi, JJ. Hi. Can you see me? You've been busy. Uh, yes, sorry. Couldn't join earlier. Yes. We are recording, so you'll be able to have the recording, okay? Um, okay, you then print the, uh, the January to December sheets. Uh, and this is how you, where you get them from. <clears throat> Sally, if you want to take a photograph of this. Okay. You got that, Eldo? I took a photograph. Can you did. On? Okay. Yeah. Um, Tejas, your uh, recall system is based on a computer, isn't it? Yes. Uh, and how's it working? So far, so good. Like, um, by default, uh, I set everybody to get on my board in uh, three months' time. And whenever I need something to come in earlier or a little later, I can customize it. It's just a click of a small button. Yeah. Okay. If you can do it on a computer, that's great. Otherwise, you need this this system I'm showing you. Um, so this is the uh, typical sheet. So uh, having written up the folder, the dentist, um, at the end of uh, a, a treatment, um, you write up uh, how many units you want, um, uh, when you want the next patient, when you want the patient to come in for their recall appointment, and what you're going to do on that appointment. So you put in the patient's name, the, 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 the receptionist would then go to the particular month that the patient's due. They put in the patient's name, how many units is needed, uh, what's going to be done, which might be REC for recall, 2BW, two bite wings, and a PA of 1.6 and check sugar, maybe, okay. 
And if the patient um, uh, books the appointment for six months time, then they, the, the system puts the date in. Um, and then a month before, they telephone the patient to um, check. Do any of your patients, Eldo, book an appointment six months ahead? Just a second, just a second. I, I, I'll answer you in a, in a minute. Okay, let me know when you're ready for the question, okay? So uh, some patients will book six months ahead, but they need to be confirmed. And others, uh, they need to be called in about five months time to book the appointment. So those sheets are put into the, uh, the recall book. So on this sheet here, you might put uh, three units uh, in three months time, REC for recall, four BW, four bite rings, and one periapical in one, on one six. And then, If the appointment is booked, uh, then the date is put in on the left there. Okay, I'm ready. Um, I've forgotten the question. Uh, How many patients do you uh, recall in a year's time? Well, uh, I remember the question. Do you want me to repeat it? Yes. Uh, does any of his patients book six months appointment in advance? Oh, yes, we have many. They book them six months in advance. Yes, we tell them. And it's automatically registered. It goes into Practo, it goes into the computer also. Computer sends a, a reminder and uh, we call them also. Yes, good, okay. Uh, what proportion book six months ahead as opposed to uh, being yeah. called in five months time? All those implant patients, we, we call them after six months, every six months. Now, let me repeat the question. You ready, Elder? Oh, yes, I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so you write in the notes that you want them to come back in six months' time, this patient, okay? Yes. So some go out to the reception desk and they book an appointment in six months time. Yes. Some of them don't want to book then, but you call them in five months time to book them. Um, may not be actually following it up exactly like how we said. So what happens to a patient who does not want to actually book in six months time? Yeah, some may, we may lose them sometimes. So, um, now what should happen is that the patient who doesn't want to book on, in six months time, that patient is also put into the appointment book, into the recall book, and then called in five months time. Okay. You don't do that? No. Okay, well, that's a serious problem. 
Um, so this is where you get the, uh, you've got these planning sheets, hopefully, already. Um, do you have these, uh, Sidi? Uh, I missed the planning sheet. Okay. Um, you know the appointment planning sheet. This this one. Yes. Okay. Yes. So Eldo, this patient uh, goes out to the reception desk, and. They're asked if they'd like to make an appointment in three months' time. They say no. Um, and the receptionist says, well, we'll call you uh, in two months' time to book an appointment for you. Okay. Um, so the interval... An appropriate time for a patient might be a year and a half to two years, but that's difficult to organize. So it's better just to get them to come back every six months. Um, So you see, Aldo, that patient who didn't want to book uh, would go into April, which is three months' time. Uh, and the patient's name, the amount of units, and what they're going to be recalled for is in April, okay? So in March, they telephone the patient. Okay. Um, so the receptionist looks at the appointment book, uh, telephones the patient, and they, they can see that there's a gap here. So they say, oh, would this time be suitable for you? Uh, and then they book the patient in. Okay. Um, and then on the appointment planning sheet that you wrote the instructions, they would put the date. Okay. Here. On the appointments chart, on the patient's folder. Um, And in the, uh, the recall book, the date's put here. So they know the patient's been booked in. Okay. Um, now, uh, the patient that's been booked in three months ahead or six months ahead has already booked the appointment. They're then called. Now, I'd be interested to know what your receptionist is told to say to the patient, Eldo. Um, but I would want them to say, good morning, Mr. Smith. This is Mary speaking. I'm telephoning to confirm your recall appointment on April the 20th at 10.30. Well, Eldo, do they say that? Yes, they say that. Or do they telephone to remind the patient? No, to confirm. They do, fantastic. Uh, what about you, Sidi? 
I am training my assistants to do that. Yeah. It's an insult to call somebody up to remind them. But to confirm is not an insult. Okay. So I would ring up uh, Satish and say, Satish, I'm reminding you. And Satish thinks, I don't need to be reminded. I'm very punctual about things. So he's insulted. But I've, if I have to confirm, Satish thinks, oh, that's very kind of Stuart to call up. Okay. So you don't say remind. Um, So the delayed booking nearer the time, the receptionist should ask for the best time of day to call the patient, okay? Um, this is, Eldo, at the time that you have said that you'd like the patient to come back in three months time, and the patient says, um, I'll, um, uh, can you call me nearer the time? So the receptionist says, what time, best time to call you? And the patient says, in the afternoon. Okay. I'll send you this presentation, Eldo, and I suggest you look at it very closely and okay. have a session with your receptionist. Okay. Okay. It would be interesting if you were able to calculate how much money you lose by not doing this. Okay. Um, so a few weeks before the patient's due, the receptionist calls them up. Do you have a separate receptionist who does this, Eldo? Mm, not really. They they both do it together. Uh, Combined. Uh, what happens if there's a patient? That's what you say. Sorry. I think you know you're trying to say that you know recall is taken care of by one single person. Uh, Better no, I. No, I'm just concerned about the fact that if the receptionist is busy with patients. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's good for you to have both of them working on it. Um, so several weeks before the time of the appointment, an appointment is booked. And the date of the appointment is entered into the recall sheet so that they know they've booked the patient. Um, and then the, uh, the time is put in the, uh, on the date, on the um, appointment planning sheet. Now, if the patient does not answer the telephone, the date of the call was made, is entered on the recall sheet. Another call is made a little bit later. So they were unable to get through to this patient, so they put down the date here. Okay. Um, or if they telephone up and the patient says, uh, I don't want to book an appointment. So they put a note there, and they'd also make a note in the patient's folder. Okay, or any relevant information. Um, it may take several calls um, and each time record the, okay. Maybe after three times, uh, you might uh, wait and telephone in a month's time or two months time.
So the information that you wrote that you wanted the patient to come in for recall, four bite rings, one PA, and one six is now on the day sheet. Are you being successful in having day sheets, uh, Siley? No. Because I use the software on the computer and on my mobile. I personally think that's a problem because if you're treating a patient and you've got um, the the that patient's X-rays on your on your on your laptop. You can't quickly look up and see uh, when the next patient's coming in. You can't quickly pick up and see what I just missed. <clears throat> the X-rays at home email. If you have a day sheet like this on the wall, on a clip binder, yes. uh, near where yes. the recept where the assistant is, so yes. the, the assistant can see it. They can be looking through at all the different patients of the day. You yes. can look up and see what's happening as well. Yes. Uh, uh, assistants have the software on their mobiles also. Yeah, but you don't want them when they're assisting you or doing right. things to go on their mobile. Right. Do you see that, what I mean? That time we have the laptop and the screen on the chair. But you may have the x-rays on there as well. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, You see, uh, um, the next patient arrives and the receptionist or the, uh, or the chair side assistant circles the next patient in red. So you look up and you can see the, the next patient's there. Okay. Or a patient cancels. So they come in and they put a red line through the patient and they put PP, which is postponed. So you can see it straight away. You don't have to go on your laptop and you don't have to go on your, um, on your mobile phone. Plus the fact that um, hopefully, um, Eldo can be in his uh, uh, sterilizing room and look at the uh, the day sheet there. Um, and also, the receptionist has one of these uh, on the wall near where they're sitting. Okay, and so you've got them in several different places. Um, we used to have one near the front door. So if the doorbell rang, somebody near the front door could quickly look and say, ah, oh, it's, it's uh, Trevor Smith coming in. So when the patient came in, they could say, hello, Trevor, how are you doing? Okay. So these are all the places where the, uh, the day sheets were. So somebody even in the lab can, um, can see who, when the doorbell rings, they know who it is.
Um, let me know, Elder, when you make some changes, okay? Okay. Um, it's a case of tightening up on the system. Fishing? <clears throat> it's a case of tightening up on the system. Yes, yes. Okay. But I will look through this presentation again and make any alterations, and then I'll send it to you all. Okay. Okay. Um, do you, uh, Tejas, um, have any comments about how you do your recall system and uh, how successful it is? Right now, uh, I don't have a reception. Uh, what do I need The sound is not very good with you, Tejas. Is there reason for that? Apart from the terrorists. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. At the moment, uh, I don't have a receptionist. It's been about uh, uh, two months since the second wave hit. I don't have a receptionist. Hmm. So uh, I haven't been uh, regular at the clinic as well. Right now, we're in the lockdown. So we're yeah. going there to see emergencies. But uh, the recall system we had last year was good. Yeah. Um, I would. Uh, uh, most patients are happy to book upfront, especially if it's a shorter duration, one month to three, uh, three months in the future, they're happy to book. Yeah. If it's a longer duration, then they'd ask for a reminder yeah. or a call back and then confirmation. You see, the interesting thing at the moment is in, in the present situation you're all in, this is a great time to get more efficient. And to do, to do some studying. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm loving the phantom head, by the way. Oh, good. <laughs> you're you're I working on I'm missing the lower jaw. You're missing the lower jaw. Is that how yes. you found it? I don't know. I haven't been able to get in touch. I'll, I'll call him and talk to him after this. Why don't you speak to him now? Not in the middle of your session. I don't want to disturb the session. Okay. That's all right. We're finishing Zoom. <laughs> all right. Dr. Elder, any update on the lower job, please? Yeah, I, I'll check with uh, my boy. I don't think uh, we have that. I think okay. Sebastian would have forgotten to send it to us. But I, I'll just find it out. All right. All right. Can you check with him, uh, Dr. Sebastian, once uh, and let me know? Yes, yes. I, I'll, I'll let you do that. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you so much. So you're you're working on the phantom head by yourself. Yes, by myself. And it's fun. I'm just testing the the, the cheeks and pulling the cheeks and seeing what it feels like to I've never worked on a phantom head before. Hmm. So for me it's an experience. It's just and I'm working on my chair positions, my my back posture, my grips. And those kind of things right now. Yeah. So when uh, Harika comes back, um, you'll be able to show her all that. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. Um, changing the subject, uh, Tejas, um, as I sent you an email or a WhatsApp. Uh, Ashwin and I are at the present moment trying to work on a uh, assistant training system. Okay. Uh, because staff turnover, unless you're Eldo Koshi, uh, is a thing which happens to all of us. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, we worked on uh, a checklist, Tejas. Uh, okay. You, you and I did, I think, um, and uh, we're we're improving on it. I mean, for example, what do you do with the assistant on the first day they arrive? Uh, the answer is 
you you tell them how you want them to speak to you, call you. Um, you tell them how you want them to speak to the patients, and you teach them how to wash their hands and how to dress and when to wear a mask and, and things like this, okay? Um, you don't explain to them the bleeding index system uh, on the first day. Um, so this is what we're working on. Now, Eldo, uh, and I'm interested in Tejas's comments on this too. Um, you see uh, this book that I've done, okay? And I've, uh, in, in pencil, I've marked out the, uh, the index, which I can change very easily. And when I come to uh, have an idea, um, I put a post-it in the relevant page. Okay, sorry, uh, the relevant page. So when I've collected together a number of these things, then I'll go to my computer and start putting stuff in. Now, Eldo, can you imagine, and, to, and Tejas, if you take on a new associate and you have this, okay? Mm -hmm. So you've got a checklist of things to go through with the associate when they first arrive. And then uh, there's a first phase of, before they see any patients or anything, uh, you go through the first phase, which would be uh, how you want them to call you, um, how to wash their hands, going through it with, a, with the presentation and, and several other things you, you'd want to go through with them. Yes. how the charting system works okay um yeah. and then uh um i mean you you you've experienced this um uh, a lot of times elder um and tejas you have as well uh but but to have a formalized system i'm sure would make it a lot easier definitely Okay. So um, when when you're making it, if you can, you know, send me and rest of the people what you are doing, then we could also, you know, involve in that and correct, make yes. some correct. Yeah. Well, uh, the first thing that um, I got Ashwin to do was to take, uh, you know, I have a uh, on the computer a list of uh, instruments a list of uh, burrs, a list of materials, and a list of equipment. And he's taken that and he's deleted things which he doesn't have and doesn't want to have. Uh, and he's going to put in his burr numbers um, and the things that he's got. So he's going to have this um, uh, list of instruments, uh, materials, etc. Okay. And um, now the advantage of this as well is that uh, if you've got um, an assistant already, and this is a second assistant, um, well, say for example, in your situation, Eldo, uh, you take on a new associate and one of your assistants one of your assistants goes through a lot of these things with the new associate. Okay. Okay. Um, there are some things that you'd want um, uh, Akshaya to go through with a new assistant, new associate. But you could get one of your assistants to go through. Okay. Um, uh, Tejas, you'll be amused to know that on the first page of this uh, book that I'm doing, thing that I'm doing, okay. Okay. Uh, it's got, why is the new associate 
uh, not doing what I haven't yet taught her to do. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Ashwin, um, we can talk about because he's not listening. Um, is a very mild, gentle person. Uh, he's not tremendously assertive, but he gets angry with assist with with assistance when they don't do what he hasn't taught them to do. Um, <clears throat> And I think that uh, this is a, a characteristic that he has. And the solution is to have a really good system of training dental assistants. Um, and that will lower his frustration rate, hopefully. Yes, that will be lovely actually. Uh, Tejas, interestingly, uh, he's got this new associate, uh, assistant. His, his main one is off with the virus at the moment. And he's got this new girl who's 18. And uh, I think she's a sort of, you might call a village girl, who's not very sort of uh, uh, worldly. And she's also quite shy. Um, so I've suggested him that he gets Kirthi, his wife, who comes in two or three days a week, to sit down and have a little talk to her and become friends with her, to help her become a little less um, shy. Have you ever taken on an, a shy assistant, uh, Tejas, apart from uh, apart from Harika? Uh, <clears throat> my. Uh, remember those those three girls I had for my assistants? One of them was very shy. Yeah. Among the three, so yes, so I did have, uh, uh, you know, I did have to talk to her on a couple of occasions, and then uh, it, it was basically about uh, uh, she did very well with the telephone techniques uh, yeah. printout that I gave her, and then we we did a trial. Uh, in a free time, we would uh, discuss about that. I would make a mock call on the phone and then we'd talk about it. So, yes, it's it does help. I mean, somebody like that can be very empathetic with patients. And uh, when they get to know patients, the patients might love them because they're so sweet and nice, and, you know, there's something. If you've got somebody who's the opposite, who's frightfully outgoing, they might not get the same relationship with the patient. So it's... Uh, yes, I, I know what you mean. Harika is uh, a favorite like that. There's some patients who just connect with Harika so easily. Yes. Thank I, you so much, What did you say, Harika? I told, thank you so much, sir. No, that, no, that's, that's a good thing. You should develop that. Yes. Yeah, sure, sir. I'll try to improve it. I was uh, talking to Harika and I said, uh, are you very chatty at home? And she said, yes. She said, he talks all the time. So it's a case of bringing this out. <laughs> um, I used to use a very, very good system for... Uh, but for uh, interviewing uh, assistants. And uh, I've, I interviewed about, I don't know, 20 or 30 people. And I was looking for one assistant. And two people uh, shone above everybody else. And they were both 16 years old. I just left school. And I thought, I'll, I'll, I'll hire two of them, because if I hire two of them, 16 year olds, that's equivalent, uh, you know, in terms of wages to a 30 year old. So I employed these two girls and I was concerned how they would get on with the older patients. 
And very early on in the day, uh, each of them were uh, each of them was in a treatment room. We had two treatment rooms, and there were there was an old person, a uh, gentleman, uh, in each of the chairs. And I was in the landing, and I heard all this lovely laughter going on. And these two girls were getting on so well with these old people, these two old men. Um, and I thought to myself, this is wonderful. And they were just, just uh, so good with them. Um, uh, <laughs> going on uh, about this, um, Tejas, um, uh, Sebastian, uh, Eldo's friend, uh, reminded me of a, a dentist uh, in Kerala uh, who has started a dental assistant course. And um, uh, I heard that he was thinking of getting uh, somebody from England who teaches dental assistants to uh, come out and sort of help set up his training system. And uh, I said, um, please do not, uh, yeah, so, so, so my theory was that the people coming out from England to teach, to tr help sort out this training system was going to, going to teach this, this dentist how to run courses where they teach absolute bullshit and rubbish. <laughs> I have never willingly, knowingly employed a trained dental assistant. Oh, wow. They, they've always been totally new. <laughs> now, the reason for this is that um, to be a successful dental assistant working for me, the first qualification is that they tolerate me, which is difficult. Because, I agree. And uh, I think that probably the same thing applies to you, Tejas, to some extent. Yes, I can be quite annoying sometimes. Well, you can be very, you're perfection. Uh, no, actually, uh, Dr. Tejas is very, very sweet. He's so good. <laughs> okay. He has a lot. <laughs> I think Harika wants a pay rise. <laughs> um, no, but uh, Harika, uh, I'm sure Tay just wants to get things right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think that um, Eldo is a different character and easier to work for. Um, because he's not that picky about detail, unless he wants to be, you know. Um, that's why he's got staff there. How, how, what's the longest serving staff member you've got? 21 years. 21 years. Yeah. Um, wow, that's amazing. It is, it is. Um, so, uh, the, f the first characteristic of a, a member of staff is that they put up with me. Uh, the second is that they are, uh, get, they get on with patients well. Um, and the third characteristic is that they are able to learn and want to learn. I once took on a dental assistant uh, when I was practicing in Canada and she was a patient who was from a male point of view to die for. She had the most lovely figure, the prettiest face. She was about 18 or 19 and I was in love with her. 
And the first day I said to her, oh, um, we keep this bit of equipment in this drawer. And on the second day, I decided it'd be better to put that bit of equipment in a different drawer. And for the rest of the week, this girl who was to die for looked in the first drawer every time for that bit of equipment. I'm telling you the truth now. On the fifth day of working for me, if she'd stripped off her naked, I wouldn't have found her attractive. She'd, she just did not have the intelligence that was needed. Okay. Um, you see, if I sit down at the dental chair and there's an assistant sitting there and I put out my left hand, what would I expect to have put into my hand. Sidey? Yes. Okay. Because dentists, if they're right handed, have a mouth mirror in their left hand, uh, compared with other instruments, about 99% of the time. So you rarely you have other things in your left hand. Now, uh, Tejas, if uh, I sat down at the chair side with a certified dental assistant trained in England and put up my left hand, what would they pass me? The answer is nothing because they haven't been trained. Um, can you imagine, Tejas, if you took on an assistant who'd been trained in a dental school, I don't know whether they have them, and you sit down at the chair side and you were going to do an amalgam filling or a composite filling on your mannequin there, uh, would they would they be able to left to do to do left and right handed passing? No, we don't have that. But they would know uh, the composite composition of composite. Probably, we need to. <laughs> okay, which is bloody useless. Okay. And also, they know about dental assisting, so don't you tell me. Okay. Um, I have a friend in, uh, in Oregon, in the USA, who has a problem with hygienists. Uh, one of them said to him, for a recall appointment, she wanted an hour and a half. Now, what on earth can she do that takes an hour and a half for somebody who's been very well trained in cleaning their teeth? I mean, she might take some x-rays, which might take five minutes, 10 minutes. Um, Eldo, do you think I should make these uh, videos available for people around the world to look at and listen to? Yes, of course. Even with you um, t telling them about your tax evasion. <laughs> Except that. <laughs> okay. The video will go bleep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, uh, Tejas, uh, 
have you seen that email I sent about the um, examination uh, checklist? Yes, the final checklist. Yeah, that was, just, that was just to remind everybody, and I know it's difficult times, so it's not possible to do anything, but it, it would give me, I think I would probably die of a heart attack if I received uh, more than two um, replies uh, to that checklist uh, showing x-rays that had been taken that were were the right x-rays and um, the charting and the bleeding index. Um, if I got more than two replies from 10 of you, I will be surprised, okay? So having insulted you all, um, you. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, Tejas, I suggested to, um, to Harika that she needed an old man patient to do a, a complete examination on. And I, I recommended you. Thank you. In, in, in 50 years, okay. <laughs> no, but I mean, I think that uh, if she did a complete examination on you and took x-rays of you and did a... Um, uh, do you have any restorations? No. Do you have any missing teeth? No. Boring. My seniors in college hated me because I have perfect teeth. <laughs> yes. Okay. In fact, one of my seniors told me to not brush for a week so that he could take me as an exam patient for scaling my teeth. Oh, see. <laughs> just, while I'm, just while I'm thinking about it, uh, there's a man in, uh, there was a man in, in Scandinavia who got the students to stop cleaning their teeth for about three months. He then uh, checked their bleeding and then had them start cleaning their teeth again. It took a week to 10 days for the bleeding to be considerably reduced. So bleeding gums can be improved considerably in a week to 10 days. Don't tell that to the periodontist. Is that, uh, yes. Don't tell that to the periodontist. Ah, oh, dear. I think I may have told you, Tejas, uh, I was talking to a periodontist. He was giving a lecture and I was sitting at the back. And I said to him at question time, if you take on a new patient um, referred to you, how long is it before you do any surgery? Um, how, long is it, how long does it take you to get the patient to uh, clean their teeth well? And he said, oh, I, I spend an hour talking to them and then I do the surgery the next visit. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm hoping that Eldo is going to start doing scale and curatage so he can get rid of his uh, his periodontist. Uh, Tejas, uh, we've gone through uh, suturing in the last yeah. year and a half. Um, did we go through occlusion? No. Uh, in bits and pieces, constructing the the plans, you went with me. I went through with me because of the patient I had. Hmm. Um, we went through my way of using patients' own dentures uh, to make complete dentures. Yes. Um, and we've now gone through the complete examination system. Yes. Um, what's the next thing, topic, 
that we need to go through. Do you have any ideas, Sally? Sorry, I missed the question. Um, what we've, we've, we've got to the end of new patient examination in terms of the sessions and recall. Yes. Um, so I'm looking for the next topic. Die, die preparation. Say it again. Preparing your dies. Uh, restorative. No. Um, and this work, preparing your dies. Die, uh, die cutting and die preparation. Die trimming. Die trimming, yes. Okay. Um, how do you raise the bar in, in, in order to make a very good fitting crown? Yeah. We can talk about that. Okay. Um, is Satish still with us? Uh, uh, no, sir. He left. Satish sir left, actually. He did. Okay. Um, I think that uh, to get very good at crown and bridge work, you, you need to trim your own dies when the models are separated so you can see what you've actually done. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll think about that, okay? Uh, what time is it with you now? 10.20. Okay. Um, for heaven's sake, all of you, just be careful, okay? And don't get yourself uh, involved in the... Uh, how is it you didn't get the virus, um, Sally? Or did you? I did, in January. Gosh. Any after effects? None till now. So far, so good. Yeah. And your father-in-law, is he okay? No, your mother-in-law, is he okay? She okay? Yeah, everyone, everyone's fine. Okay. She got her first dose of vaccine too. It's been three months now since she got discharged, so everyone's fine. You had a vaccination, Tejas? Uh, both of them, yes, in February. Yeah. Anant, you had a vaccination? Yes, sir. You have? Good, 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 yes. good. And uh, Harika, have you had vaccination? Uh, no, this month and I'll have all my family members got vaccinated except me. I'm going to get it this month. Good. Actually, this stock is uh, not available, so I didn't get the vaccination. Yeah. You've got a lovely voice, uh, Harika. I think it's great. Um, Thank you so much. I'm not comment commenting on your hairstyle at the moment, Anath, because I'm still very impressed by your art. How big is that picture that you showed? How big is it? Uh, it's uh, around 30 cent 35 centimeters. How big this way? About a foot. That big? Uh, yes. It's quite Two. big. How long did it take you? Uh, five, uh, four hours. Is that all? Good Lord. How often do you do painting? Uh, not much, sir. When, when I get a, when I feel like doing only, I try doing it. Mm. Usually I don't have time. After cleaning, I fully exhausted, so. It's how because you, lockdown, so that's not it. How you did that beak? Because of the lock. Was amazing. The curve of that beak is so excellent. Just amazing. Yeah. So you should have him do illustrations for your presentation. Perhaps you should do a portrait of me. If he can do that beak. Yes, sir. If he can do that beak, he can do my nose. <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, 
Um, I'll be in contact, but um, um, we'll meet up again in uh, uh, next week. Okay. Sure, okay. sounds good. Cheers, Harika. Cheers, Anna. Yeah. Cheers. Sorry. Yes. Bye then. Oh yeah. If I Let think me... of a new topic. Yeah, the dreaming. Even I want to. I wanted to learn about gold. Uh, yes. Preparation. And right. if anything else, I'll send an email. Okay, we'll go. We'll go through restorative again. Okay. Okay. Um. Now. Uh, that uh, those presentations I sent you the other day, um, uh, uh, Sidi uh, made some comments about the presentation on uh, uh, the first appointment that a patient comes to you. Um, so I made some alteration to that presentation. Uh, have you got any anything else to say about that, Sidi? No. Okay. So um, I'll send out this new uh, this new presentation. Okay. Um, right. Okay. I will uh, see you all next week. See you. Thank right. you. When I see you next week, I shall be one year older. Thank you. Oh, when is it? When is the big day? Uh, on Thursday next week. Oh, okay. okay. I, should, I should be 29. Okay. I, should, I should expect Anna to paint me a birthday card. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, a portrait of me from memory. <laughs> So, okay, we'll be back in touch uh, uh, again in the next few days, okay? Okay. Okay, yeah. cheers then. Cheers, bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Good night, bye. Bye-bye.